Welcome to an edition of Yo On The Go, Leadership Moments, where we upgrade all the vehicles in life. Today, I have a very special guest, Stephen Phillips. He is a professor of electrical engineering at Arizona State University. He's also the IEEE 2020 Vice President of Educational Activities. His teaching and research interests include control systems, microsystems, and micromechanical systems. So Stephen, I, I'm really, really thankful to have you on here as an academic, as a researcher, as well as an IEEE um, volunteer and leader. I'm curious, what's the most important values that you demonstrate as a leader? And what, what is that like to be in that setting? Yeah, so my leadership role at, at, at ASU in, in the academic side is uh, as a department head. So I'm the director of the School of Electrical Computer and Energy Engineering. Uh, and, and my team, the faculty and staff, we deliver academic and research programs to about 3,000 students. So ironically, I think the most important thing about leadership is not the leader. It's about our team and what we accomplish together. And I, I try very carefully in my language and in what we do to not refer to it as my team. It's our team and we do all the accomplishments together. So as a team environment, and I know that as, you're, as we're doing um, you know, cutting edge research, it tends to be uh, it tends to be a team. No one person can really forge ahead these days. How do you encourage these team members uh, during this time, especially in the time of COVID? So um, it, it has been a challenging time, especially this year. And um, what I try to do is to outline what is the change we're trying to uh, accommodate, um, put some boundary conditions on it, and enable and encourage the team to contribute in any way they best can. So need to define an environment where each team member can find uh, an area where they have an expertise where they can contribute the most. Um, and we've, we've done this very recently as we uh, switched all of our uh, educational instruction to be remote. Um, we did it in the spring, we did it in an emergency mode um, we got it done. It might not have been the slickest delivery ever. Um, and then during the summer, we were able to uh, look at the change more carefully, take our time and design systems to be able to be the most effective delivery of our academic content to our students. Um, so we built a system where students can choose how they want to engage with the classroom. They can come to class. Yes, they have to wear a mask and be physically distanced. Or they can watch remotely live and do question and answer uh, with, the, with the faculty member. Or if they want to do it at a different time, they can watch the class on demand. Of course, then they can't ask questions real time. They can ask it afterwards. And um, the faculty embrace this because it gives the students the most freedom to access the content and to succeed uh, in the way that fits them the best. That's really, really great that, um, you know, within a short period of time, a period of maybe seven months, you're able to go from a prototype to full blown, um, you know, remote learning classes, right? For, and it's actually a hybrid model where you have both in person, um, uh, in-person video that comes in as well as um, as well as uh, video on demand, so to speak. That's an incredible operation that the staff and uh, the entire university put together. Uh, can you give me a little bit of insight in how that was all, you know, while the back end, uh, what kind of meetings were, were going on during the summer period that enabled this capability? Yeah, so um... <clears throat> It was done at, 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 at many levels. At, at our level, so for our team, um, I gathered together um, a group of, a smaller group of faculty. We have 80 faculty, but I couldn't, I couldn't really engage them all at once. So a smaller group of faculty who have shown leadership on the uh, classroom delivery over time, a small group, and we, brainstormed on what we thought would work the best. We pulled together a small focus group of students um, to find out from their perspective how they saw, thought the spring worked and what they liked and didn't like. 
And then with that group, we came up with some ideas of how we thought we could do this. Um, so the tricky part is then how do you spread that to the whole team? Right. So these sort of thought leaders on the classroom delivery um, were my spokespeople to the rest of the team. They 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 helped us to um, get everybody on board with doing this. And it was tricky because it's much more work than the traditional just show up in the lecture room on the whiteboard and, and give the lecture. You have to do a lot more preparation. Um, we invested in a bunch of technology so we could live stream all the lectures. So every classroom has cameras and microphones and all those sorts of things. Um, we, we happen to use Zoom just, just like you are now, um, which has turned out to be a great platform for us. Um, so with those investments some patience and um, time of the faculty, we were able to do a great job and the students have, have responded very well. Well, that's really, that's really amazing to see that, um, that amount of work. So you, you not only did, um, had a vision, but you're also changing the vision shaped by really the customer in some ways, the students. And um, I can see that as an, in, as an academic, in an academic environment, you're not only leading and pushing the envelope of technology, but you're also leading and growing the students themselves, the, the um, graduate students, the undergraduate students in all of their paths uh, forward. I, I'm curious, how do you encourage um, the development of your team, um, especially in the idea of mentorship? Right. So, um, you know, one way to think about faculty in their research program, especially, is um, they're kind of a small entrepreneurial activity. The faculty raise the funds for their research. They hire the graduate students and some undergraduates to work in their research lab. And they, in some sense, have to sell the results, right? Convince industry that these are um, good ideas that, that industry might pick up. And so in, in leading a group that has students um, need to be sensitive to several things. Not only are they employees, we're paying them, um, but they're also learners. And so there's a lot of mentoring that goes on, not just supervision. And one of the things that's very important is to help the students to grow so that when they finish and they all leave, right? We have these employees for several years. Uh, and they all leave and <clears throat> they're going to go off and work in the industry or maybe an academic uh, or, or, or go to another graduate program. Um, and we need them to be able to grow in those roles. So a lot of us will encourage our students to do internships in, in uh, industry uh, and to have a lot of engagement with our industry partners on demo days and, and other events that we have where we bring industry well, now virtually to campus uh, to engage with us uh, so that we can showcase what we're doing. Uh, and that seems to be quite an effective uh, approach. Wonderful. So you're really uh, bringing and drawing them into the industry while they're being students, uh, both encouraging them and also giving those opportunities to have pitch days and, and other interactions. That's, that's really great. That's really exciting work that you're doing at Arizona State. It's been really great to uh, spend time with Stephen, and um, you'll have an opportunity to talk with Stephen at the IEEE 2020 Rising Stars Conference that's happening this January, um, uh, 2nd to 4th. And so I encourage you to look at the links below and register for this conference. It's an extremely exciting conference with Stephen and other amazing speakers that will be able to share their experiences and their uh, mentorship um, advice to you. So I hope this was helpful for you. Stephen, thank you so much for the time and uh, we'll talk uh, very soon at the conference. Thanks very much for having me. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Until next time, bye.